Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. You know, there are many different amazing theme parks all over the world, and so far, I know about theme parks like Knott's Berry Farm, Six Flags, Legoland, Hershey Park, Universal Studios, and of course, Disneyland, but when it comes to imaginary theme parks, Many people like to make their own drawings of them, write fanfics, feature non-existing theme parks in films, and of course, they use Roller Coaster Tycoon, or even Minecraft. But more recently, Paramount Pictures teamed up with not only Nickelodeon Studios, but also Elyon Animation to make a movie about a wondrous theme park beyond your wildest imagination. Released on March 15, 2019, the movie is Wonder Park. So, let's get started. Our story centers on June, an optimistic, imaginative girl who spent her childhood days constructing an amusement park filled with fantastical rides and inhabited by talking animals, called Wonderland, along with her mother and her friends. But, sadly, she lost her sense of imagination and wonder after her mother falls sick, until she finds the real Wonderland in the woods. June discovers that the park is in disarray and that she's the only one who can fix it. So, she bands together with the animals to save this magical place from a pack of chimpanz zombies and bring back the wonder in Wonderland. So, what do I think of the movie? Well, this was a really fun and splendiferous movie. But to further explain why I like this film, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Production on Wonder Park commenced in September 2014. In June 2015, it was revealed that Spain's Ilion Animation Studios, who previously worked on Planet 51, would produce the fully animated 3D movie. In November 2015, Paramount Animation officially announced the project, originally titled Amusement Park, with former Pixar animator Dylan Brown as director. But, sadly, in January 2018, it was reported that director Dylan Brown was fired from the production by Paramount Pictures following an investigation into complaints of inappropriate and unwanted conduct by multiple women. Since production was nearly complete at the time, the studio did not hire a replacement and no one received an official director's credit on the movie. But, aside from that, it, it was revealed that this movie will be the third animated film from Nickelodeon Movies to spawn an animated TV show on the network. The previous two being Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius, and Barnyard. as well as the first not to be produced by Steven Odenkirk. By the way, in my opinion, on a scale from 3 to 1, it would be Jimmy Neutron at 1, Wonder Park at 2, and Barnyard at the very bottom. As for the animation, well, in my opinion, Ilion did great at capturing this wonderful imaginary theme park, and... I really love how the many different rides look in this movie, like the Clockwork Swings, the Sky Flinger, and many others. However, I'd hate to sound kind of rude, but in my opinion, this theme park almost puts the Disney Imagineers to shame. No offense, guys. As for the story itself, well, to me, most of it feels kind of a bit rushed, and a tad cliched. Okay, I mean, the idea of the park going into ruins 
kind of reminds me of Brad Bird's Tomorrowland, while the rest of it feels kind of like Epic Mickey, in a way, though. However, the beginning scenes where June and her mother are imagining Wonderland and having fun together makes me smile. And the scene where June and her friends create a machine that functions like a theme park ride was pretty creative, but really over the top due to the damage the said contraption caused. Also, the following several minutes of the film did make me really teary-eyed when June's mother got sick. Also, in my opinion, the Wonder Chimp plush toys look kind of cute when they're just ordinary toys, but when they're possessed by darkness and become chimpanzee zombies, they are a bit creepy to me. In fact, it almost reminds me of the several toys that the Heartless possessed in the toy box level in Kingdom Hearts 3. Anyway, now that we got Mustang notes out of the way, let's move on to the characters and their voice actors. For the voice of June, the studio got 11-year-old actress Brianna Densky, who has done commercials for Lysol and Nickelodeon, and she portrayed Jackie Durhan in the Lifetime movie Wishin' and Hopin'. You know, I really like June, due to the fact that she's a really optimistic and imaginative young girl. And I really love the Wonderland models and drawings that she makes with her family. Plus, June has such wonderful and creative ideas while bringing the wonder back to Wonderland. Next up, we have Greta, a wild boar voiced by Myla Kunis, whom I talked about in my blog of Oz the Great and Powerful. To me, Greta is a very benevolent character, and I think she makes a great leader for all the other animals of Wonderland. Next we have Boomer, voiced by Ken Hudson Campbell. Boomer is a blue bear who welcomes the visitors to Wonderland. In my opinion, Boomer is the friendliest character in the movie, and I think he's very funny, especially when he is forced to be on a roller coaster and be pushed by a bird, and when he accidentally dozes off a few times throughout the movie. Next are Cooper and Gus, voiced by Kenan Thompson and Ken Jeong. These beavers work as mechanics and builders for Wonderland, and I think they move really fast while building and operating several rides. Next is Steve, voiced by John Oliver. Best known for voicing Vanity Smurf in the live-action Smurfs films, and he'll be voicing Zazu in the Lion King remake this summer. Anyway, Steve is a porcupine who is the safety officer of Wonderland. To me, Steve is another great character, like when he uses his spikes as darts, and I find it pretty, well, funny that he has a crush on Greta because, well, he's a porcupine and she's a boar. And finally, we have Peanut, voiced by Norbert Leo Butts. Best known for his work in Broadway theater. Now, Peanut is a chimpanzee who acts as Wonderland's mascot and ride creator. In my opinion, Peanut gets the most build-up out of all the animals in Wonderland. Plus, I find it very magical that he uses a magic marker to make June or her mother's ideas come to life. However, I feel that Peanut is a little bit dramatic due to him hiding from the darkness and feeling lost 
without hearing the voice in his head. Anyway, let's move on to my final words. Overall, Wonder Park is an absolute wonder for the screen. Aside from most of the story and the pacing, it has a colorful cast of characters, the animation is pretty good, the rides and Wonderland itself look very creative and splendiferous, plus the voice acting is absolutely spectacular. The music by Stephen Price is marvelous, and of course, the film serves as a, as a great reminder to never let go of your childhood. Like I always say, losing your youth could mean losing yourself. So, I think you folks should check this movie out if you're looking for a movie to take your kids to. But I'm not sure if it's for everybody, though. So, my rating for this movie will be a 71% out of 100. Also, I'll be looking forward to the upcoming Wonder Park TV show. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me again next time. Mustang Power.